Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Barry C. and Jeff H. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. There's a lot going on right now with tax credits and charging, and we'll definitely talk about that, but we can't lose sight of what matters most for Tesla right now, and that's FSD progress. With Ashok saying that FSD 12.5.6.3 has now shipped widely to AI4, I figured it'd be time for some highlights. This is the version with the end-to-end -end network on the highway, and don't forget, when you have less heuristic code, it should be much easier and more efficient to actually scale. And to get the message out there as Scott has been saying on X I do agree it would be awesome to be able to select your own custom route especially in your hometown where I live at home to get into town it always takes a terrible route going through a ridiculous intersection and I would love to have the ability to not disengage at the same point every time JC on X shared a long video of his experience with 12.5.6.3 and there was a pretty impressive clip on the highway I mean I wouldn't do anything different here zero Um, and we got a slower car in front of us. So now we're gonna get over to the right. Now, I don't know if we're getting over to the right because of that slower car or because our exit's in a mile and a half. It may be, a, uh, I think it's probably because of our exit. So we're getting over for the exit sooner. That was at about one and three quarter mile, if that was the reason it was getting over. I like that. It's getting over for the exit sooner. Yeah, we're gonna get off on the North Park Drive exit here in about a mile. Somebody's got their left blinker to get, and instead, <laughs> we get over here. <laughs> All right, but now we're gonna have to work our way back over. Whoa, okay, uh, this is gonna be really, really interesting. Is we have gone all the way back over to the left lane, and we gotta get all the way back over to the right in a half a mile. I'm gonna stay quiet here for a second and see if it can do this. All right, made it over two. We gotta get over two more and you've got 0.1 mile. Holy crap. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. You gotta love the clap. I know that is super relatable and for what it's worth, he was on the hurry profile. I had the chance to test this latest version earlier today for about two hours and overall it was really good, but I wanted to show you a few clips. You're about to see this green car doing some squirrely driving. You may have missed it, but it did go through that yellow light without hitting the brakes, so that was a welcome change. But here, luckily there was nobody behind us, so I could let this scenario play out. As you can see, it was about to go around, but then it slammed on the brakes. So just one more time, if I was driving, I already would have been in the right lane and just would have cruised around it, but it really wanted to stay in that center lane for some reason and did end up coming to a complete stop, which is certainly not ideal. You can see right here at this point, the speed limit was 45. Most of our drive was pretty uneventful, very smooth, but it is still driving too slow on the city streets. I did have my profile in hurry mode. I don't think it really matters much for city streets with speed limits less than 50 miles per hour. But again, overall, very early first impressions were certainly positive. It was handling these two lane roundabouts with ease. Granted, there wasn't as much traffic as there usually is. But I had no problems with lane selection or anything like that. Here, it was extra cautious for this woman crossing the street, not on a crosswalk, gave her plenty of space, slowed down in plenty of time. And the last clip that I wanted to share, you'll see when this light turns green, it properly waits because there are some pedestrians that are coming. So it was again, very cautious. 
let them go ahead rather than taking the right of way which it had with the green light. And once they were out of the way, proceeded through. I'm hoping to have some more time to test it with more traffic this weekend, but I'm guessing a lot of you have already received it, so let us know below if you've had a chance to try it out. There's currently a major shift taking place in the media industry as we have some famous CNN anchors that are now leaving for the streaming and podcasting world. Comcast has reportedly put MSNBC up for sale. And after Trump's victory, the viewership of MSNBC has dropped by half. And elsewhere, the ratings are crumbling as well. If you haven't been paying attention, the reason this is happening is because the media has largely become a propaganda machine and not at all concerned with objective reporting of the facts. We've seen millions of people under the influence, if you will, of these programs, and it's time to put the final nail in the coffin. If you want to do your part, I'd strongly encourage you to check out Ground News, the sponsor of this video. It's a platform that has the sole focus of keeping us informed with without biased algorithms and by exposing any political leaning of every source. Take this report about nearly 2 million people getting sick from air pollution, for example. Of all the sources covering it, 30% lean left and just 4% lean right. Using ground news, I can check my own news bias every week to see the political leaning of the articles I'm reading. Ground news has also saved me a ton of time avoiding puff pieces as 82% of the articles I read have high factuality. That's because when I'm looking for breaking Elon and Tesla news, I can see these tags for every source. It tells me who owns the publication, the factuality level, and the political bias. And I know many of you have already signed up, but for those that haven't, you can actually get the best deal that Ground News will offer all year at 50% off the Vantage plan for unlimited access at ground.news slash electrified, or you can use the QR code right on the screen. Once again, there seems to be a lot of confusion out there right now about another Tesla update from Tesla Charging about the new V4 cabinets that are finally here. To make the distinction, the cabinets are the back end, whereas the posts or the stalls or the dispensers are what you're actually interfacing with when you go to supercharge your car. So the cabinets are what actually supply the power to the posts, stalls, or dispensers. We know there are already V4 locations out in the wild and active, but those all still have had the version 3 cabinets, meaning the charging speeds were effectively the same. But today, Tesla announced the V4 cabinet capable of delivering up to 500 kilowatts for cars and 1.2 megawatts for semi. And this is where things get confusing. They say supports 400 volts to 1000 volt vehicle architectures, including 30% faster charging for the Cybertruck. Let's say current Cybertruck charging speeds are 300 kilowatts peak, and that may be on the high side. 30% higher than that would only be 390 kilowatts, not 500. So I think what they mean with this line is that the overall charging curve or the overall charging time will be 30% faster, meaning something like the 10% to 80% overall time. Because if they meant the peak charge rate would only be 30% faster, that really wouldn't be up to 500 kilowatts. Then they say the sexy vehicles enjoy 250 kilowatt charge rates they already experience on V3 cabinets, which by my interpretation means we should not be expecting any major upgrades here for the current sexy lineup. Of course, with a future software update that could always change, maybe they can push 300 kilowatts with the current hardware, but that's TBD. So at least for now, it sounds like this upgrade will be the most beneficial for the Tesla Semi, the Cybertruck, and then other non-Tesla vehicles. I'm thinking about Lucid, Hyundai, Kia, those on the 800 volt architecture. And we'll see what Tesla wants to do with Project Juniper. Maybe we see a higher voltage for that new vehicle. The new V4 cabinet powers eight posts, which is twice the number of the stalls per cabinet relative to version three. It has a smaller footprint and less complexity, so more sites can come online faster. The next gen hardware allows for cutting edge power electronics designed to be the most reliable on the planet with three times the power density, enabling higher throughput with lower costs. 
Our first sites with V4 cabinets are going into permitting now, first openings in 2025. Max from the supercharger team said posts can peak up to 500 kilowatts for cars, again, adding to the confusion, but we need less than one megawatt across eight posts to deliver max power to cars 99% of the time. No more DC bus bar between cabinets. The power comes from a single V4 cabinet to eight stalls. Easier to install, cheaper, and more reliable. Even some of the small incremental improvements matter. The V4 cabinet has a 2% efficiency improvement. Superchargers already deliver over five terawatt hours per year, so that's 100 gigawatt hours per year in waste heat that can be save. And to keep things simple, it was that DC bus bar on the V3 cabinets that allowed the power sharing between those cabinets. Now, if you divide one megawatt, which is 1000 kilowatts across eight different stalls, that would be 125 kilowatts per stall if they're all used at the same time. And the reason that breakdown delivers max power 99% of the time is because throughout the charging curve, you're only at those peak speeds for a very short period of time. Or if you use the number for the Tesla Semi, which would be 1,200 kilowatts divided by eight, that would be 150 kilowatts per stall if they're all used at the same time. Which apples to apples would actually be an improvement from the V3 cabinets because let's say those had a max output of 350 kilowatts divided by four stalls stalls, that's about 87.5 kilowatts when they're all being used. So going from that shared rate of about 88 kilowatts on version three, bumping that up to even 125 on the lower end, that would be roughly a 42% improvement. Again, in that scenario where all of the stalls are being used at the same time. Another big point to make here is it sounds like the Tesla Semi is going to use the same V4 cabinet as the Cybertruck and future Tesla vehicles. And of course, having the same backend will lead to better economies of scale, a simpler supply chain, and all of that efficiency. But my biggest question right now is will Tesla be able to retrofit all of the existing supercharger locations with these V4 cabinets? Not only is it possible, but does Tesla plan to actually do that? And remember, Max did say these V4 cabinets are cheaper, so maybe these are actually cheaper than version three, which would be quite impressive. Better capacity, better output, and more reliable. That would all explain the reason Tesla has been waiting to make this announcement. I'm not an engineer, but I can't imagine the amount of work it took to have better output speeds across double the number of stalls relative to version three. We just cannot gloss over over that fact. Now, of course, it's going to take time for Tesla to complete this rollout. The first sites won't be online until next year. We have the question about retrofits for existing sites. And again, I'm not expecting any major charging improvements for the current sexy lineup, but at least it's now possible with a future software update. But the TLDW, the already best charging network in the world by far, just got even better. We already talked about the possibility and likelihood of this happening last week week, so you can go back and catch that video if you missed it, but it sounds like Trump's team is looking to end the tax credit for EVs. They did say representatives of Tesla have told a Trump transition committee they support ending the subsidy. Elon did say earlier this year, killing the subsidy might slightly hurt Tesla sales, but would devastate its US EV competitors. Members of the energy transition team expect the Republican Congress will deploy a legislative measure known as reconciliation to avoid avoid relying on Democratic votes. Ironically, Biden used the same tactic to get the IRA bill passed. I really don't want to beat a dead horse here. I went into more detail in other videos, but just know in the short term, this would absolutely be a negative thing for Tesla's profitability. Even though Elon has said in the past, take away the subsidies, it will only help Tesla. Also remove subsidies from all industries. And this is one of the points I wanted to make how this could help Tesla. I'm not sure this is what Elon meant, but Tesla had to jump through all kinds of hoops to make sure their vehicles would actually qualify. So now all of those requirements are out the window, really opening up the supply chain for Tesla. And yes, this is all hypothetical. The tax credits have not been successfully repealed yet, but it's looking like they will be eventually. But in that case, Tesla can now source whatever battery materials they want, whatever battery packs they want. 
They can price their vehicles as they see fit without having to worry about any price cap limitations. So don't get me wrong, I'm not at all trying to argue that those few things somehow outweigh the negative impact taking them away will have. But I do believe in the long term, even the next three plus years, this will ultimately boil down to be a nothing burger. The biggest changes I see happening, legacy automakers will spend even less R&D and less time on electric vehicles and they'll shift back toward making more ICE vehicles, which obviously clears the runway even more for Tesla in the EV world. I will say though, for the overall EV transition in the United States, this is definitely a negative. There are no mental gymnastics you can do to turn that into a positive for the overall EV industry. And now the route to profitability for any company not named Tesla just became that much harder. On the topic, I did see this screenshot for a Cybertruck lease deal for the all-wheel drive. And at the bottom, you'll see additional credits, a lease incentive of $7,500. For now, it looks like the tax credit is being applied to the Cybertruck lease. Don't go crazy out there though, just because the credit is included does not mean this lease is a good deal. Speaking of the Cybertruck, Tesla has officially ended the in-house wrap service. And if you go to Tesla's inventory, you will now find the Cybertruck is available right now. It's just the foundation series in the all wheel drive or Cyber Beast. There is actually a new physical recall for the Cybertruck. Tesla will replace the affected part, which is the drive inverter for free starting on or after December 9th. This recall affects just over 2,400 Cybertrucks. Starting on November 20th, the Cybercab will be going on tour across Europe. So if you're over there, I'll have a link down below so you can check out each location. It'll be in London, Paris, Amsterdam, Oslo, Stockholm, and Berlin. CATL did say it would consider building a US plant if Trump opens the door to Chinese investment in the EV supply chain. Their chairman said originally when we wanted to invest in the US, the US government said no. Remember, at least for now, it sounds like the manufacturing or the production tax credit is going to be safe, so this would obviously be a lucrative deal for CATL. Jason Camisa and Haggerty put out a new video on the Model 3 performance and they did an old school comparison with the BMW M3 competition. Spoiler alert, they chose the Tesla Model 3 as the winner. I would love to play some clips for you, but I don't want any copyright strikes from Haggerty, which has happened in the past, so I'll have the video linked below if you want to check it out. Tesla stock closed the day at $311.18, down 5.77%, while the Nasdaq was down 0.64%. The volume was 24% above the average volume the past 30 days. Don't forget, check out Ground News linked below. Take advantage of that new discount of 50% if you're interested. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video. If you did, you can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.